Here I'm contemplating what bikes I would have in my £100,000 garage. Um, so if I become a millionaire, I'm going to allow myself to spend 10% on my, of my money on motorbikes, definitely. And uh, what would I have in my garage? So it's not like a 10-bike garage or a 5-bike garage or anything like that. It's a £100,000 or uh, $100,000 uh, garage that we're doing here. So be interested, this is what I'm choosing so far at the moment, uh, and if anybody else has a video like this, be interested to see what they choose. So I am, um, so I'm going to be using Auto Trader and uh, looking at, you know, it could be second-hand bikes and all that kind of stuff, doesn't need to be uh, first-hand, and just uh, getting the idea of their prices that I'm going for. So the first bike, actually, I'm going to go, in fact, the first two bikes, I know what I'm going to choose, and they are pretty unusual ones for a £100,000 garage. First one, if I go to make, uh, so first of all, the, my, my body types I've chosen, just so you understand, I've chosen classic, custom cruiser, uh, retro, roadster, naked, special, don't know what that is, super sports, uh, there isn't just one just like a sports bike, just normal, maybe that'd be under roadster, I guess, super moto, I don't think that, super, maybe sports tour, I'll click on that one as well, that sounds... Uh, quite cool, uh, but the rest don't really know about those. So I'm going to close all that. First one uh, I'm going to go to is in the alphabet over here. Going to go to one which I definitely want to get in my hundred thousand pound garage. Starts with an M U T Mutt, and there's one. Yes, there is perfect bingo. Uh, the two hundred and fifty cc Mutt Mushman. Oh, I love I love this bike so much. There's the one uh, two the one two five in the UK as well, um, but the two fifty has a tiny bit more horsepower. We're talking, I think it's going from eleven horsepower to fifteen horsepower. Absolutely no power whatsoever. Does it even? T I don't think it even tells you uh, it's it's power here. It's it's it, you're not buying it for a power. Um, but the Mushman I think looks fantastic. So right, we shall save that image. Okay, Mushman is number one in the a uh, in the hundred thousand hundred thousand pound garage. So that's a uh, we'll call we'll just call that five grand because you know once you add on insurance, so that's five grand uh, for the Mushman. Yeah, the Mushman I think it uh, just looks brilliant. The two fifty cc just for, if you're in the city and you're riding anywhere, I just think that looks the business. Uh, two fifty just having a tiny bit more power than the one two five. It does. Do any of them tell you the actual power? No. Um, and just a little tank, um, uh, the leather belt over the tank and all that kind of stuff. Just an absolute favourite um, of mine. So yeah, uh, going for the most expensive, we'll say about five grand. Have they even got a video of it here? Can we play this? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Uh, okay, so that, in fact, suppose we're, I'm going for two British um, bikes to start off with. In fact, there's probably going to be a lot of British bikes here. But definitely the Mushman is bike number one, possibly the cheapest. And then the next one I'm going to choose is going to be the most expensive. Um, in fact, so expensive that I don't know what the actual prices are because the next one I'm going to want to get isn't this one, but it's this company. So the Aerial Ace. Ouch, that's quite expensive. £55,000. So we could get 10 Mushmans for one aerial here. So this really cuts down the amount of money I've got left for uh, for the rest of my bikes. Uh, now, I don't know if it would be this one that I want, but the aerial, I just think, sounds fantastic. What's this? It's like a one... 0.237 cc engine. Um, it's just mental. Look at that exhaust. Look at the build of it. I've got the actual company here. Oh, that red one. They've got. Uh, I think they've got a couple different designs of their Aerial Ace. Uh, so we'll go to Aerial Vehicles, Atom Nomad Ace, and if we click on that, uh, oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, look at look at that front suspension. Thing, whatever that is, that's just amazing. Oh, oh, so cool. I, so I don't know what the price of these are. I think these are all custom built. Um, and the, the that one with the insane front uh, front suspension 
is the one I want to go for. So I don't know how much that is. So that looks like the normal, normal suspension there. And then there's the one with the crazy, crazy suspension. Uh, whew. Uh, so, whew. Okay, kind of excited about that one. So, um, yeah, we'll just call that 50... We'll call that 55 grand, right? We'll save that one and we'll put that in the £100,000 garage. So now to go for some more sensible options. Uh, one, this is the one bike which I'm using just now is the Honda CB1000R and that has been an amazing bike. Look at that gold wing. That's so cool there. And I definitely want to have that in my garage as my as one of my bikes. However, look at these fire blades. They are so cool. But I don't know if I need them when I've already got the Aerial Ace. So uh, the uh, the CBR650 is definitely a contender there. So let's go to, uh, well, actually, no, let's go to the CB1000R. And, oh, look at, yeah, no, I don't care. That looks amazing. That one. Those colours. Those gold wheels. Maybe not that exhaust. Is there one with a better exhaust? Uh, let's see. Is there any other options? Oh, that one's got a cool... Funky little exhaust going on there. Uh, but the colour scheme of that top one. Ooh, uh, the black edition. So the black edition in blue, I think, looks great. Better than the burgundy red uh, going on here. However, it's a real tough one here to either go... I'll, I'll just save this. I'll put this in a, as a contender. Uh, let's uh, get the photo of it side on. Save that. Because the other option I want is the CBR, uh, CBR 650R. Because this one just looks amazing. Again, the Repsol uh, version, not so sure of, of that one. But just look at that for a hundred horsepower motor. Actually, no, because I'm also very tempted. So, it, oh, right, okay, hold on. I'll have to save this. Wait, which one do I like the most out of here? Any with a aftermarket exhaust going on? Okay, uh, top pit. Bl black is kind of cool, but red is the coolest, I think. Yeah, this one. So this one with the aftermarket uh, exhaust and the gold engine cover and... A that I think that was a year before the current year, so that's a 2020. Yes, yeah, so that's a couple of years back. The design of that I just thought was a wee bit cooler. However, I am very, also very more attracted to a slightly different one, the Aprilia 660. In I think it's in black is the one which I like. Oh, because it's got black and red. It looks very cool, and it, and it's got about the same horsepower, and it's. But however, the difference is the Aprilia is a is a twin. A, is it a V twin? No, inline twin. Um, meanwhile, the Honda is an inline four, so it's a, it's a tough one. But the Aprilia, I just think, looks absolutely stunning. Really cool lights, and again, I'm I'm thinking along the lines of I don't need to worry about you know repair costs or maintenance costs because I hear the Aprilia is a bit more of a breakdown machine or things uh, not working on it quite as well like Honda's got such a great rep reputation that will last forever uh, but the Aprilia I think looks even better so hold on I'll find the one I like of this and we'll do a side by side comparison see which one we're liking here okay so bringing these into the £100,000 uh, garage here we've only got about forty grand uh, left here, so we've got whoa, two bikes which are full sports and with like all the fairings. So that's the Honda CBR650R with the gold engine, the gold uh, covers their external exhaust, and oh, and it's got little red bits on the wheels. That was nice. Or the Aprilia, slightly more horsepower, different style engine. Um, Oh, but has more tech on it and is considered to be fantastic. And then there's a CBR, a CB1000R, which I know is an absolutely stonking bike and th those amazing colours. Can I have two of the same make? Two Hondas in the same garage? I, in fact, okay, maybe that's the rule. You're not allowed to have two bikes from the same manufacturer 
in this. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, Honda CB 650R or CBR, you're out, and it in comes the Aprilia 660, whoo, uh, RS 660, and the Honda CB 1000 um, R in those spectacular colors. Maybe not the gold wheels, not too sure about that, but that tank color is spectacular. So that was an extra uh, 14 grand for the uh, CB 1000 R and about another nine grand for the Aprilia second hand. Uh, 83,000 that we're at just now. So I'm only left with 17,000 uh, pounds for this. Now, one thing I definitely need is I need I need a cruiser. I need uh, my Harley Davidson. So let's get a Harley um, for this. Now, out of all the Harleys, it's hard to choose which one's which. And there's some Harleys which you would definitely choose if you weren't having multiple other uh, bikes in here. So with this, because I'm not needing one that has to be all the performance, and I don't need one which is all the speed, I don't need one, I'm literally going for sound. Now, the whole reason I got into motorbikes was because of one video by a person that I was scrolling past on Instagram, and it's a, it's a lady who I absolutely love her motorbike. Uh, so she's got the Iron 883, and the way she's decked it out with the way she's customized it just looks fantastic the very one of her very first videos it was just a simple video of her walking to her bike in the middle of night kicking off like the pillion seat and walking away and that that's all that's all it was i was like i need to get a motorbike and it's just the sound of this so again with harleys i i don't need a sports one i don't need a fast one oh but their bikes are so cool and it, it, she just got one bike and i love it I'm sure people look at her pictures to so look at her. I'm pure... Oh, and just like the red... Having her speedometer down at the side there and the red cables and the kind of... What do you call it? The uh, wire tidy or the engine tidy that they have underneath um, going on. So hers is looking great. I also like her uh, bobber saddle, which looks like it's got... You know, good for her by tailbone. Um, where is the video? She had a vid... Let's find the video. This is it. Six million views. Can we hear it? Let's hear it. Just, oh, that sound. And then I'll just, I'll have to mute it because it's got that music on. And then she kicks that away. And it's just for me, nighttime, under the lights, how good that bike looks and listen. Oh. Oh, when I mean, you're listening to that with headphones on, that is amazing. I'm sure I'll have to, uh, video uh, comment on her video saying this has cost me thousands of pounds this one video and also given Harley Davidson a lot of money on that so iron 883 is what we're going for specifically a totally decked out one like that so let's go Harley oh here's not a bad example of it actually here oh with like drag pipe uh, exhaust and that oh yes liking this one a lot I don't know if it's as cool as her bike there's something about her bike which I just, whether it's the longer exhaust, maybe it's the longer exhaust uh, that I like on there. But that looks pretty cool. I do like that uh, the text of the Harley Davidson uh, written on the side of that tank. Uh, maybe I'm not sure about that exhaust, actually, because that, that exhaust is literally coming out right where your foot is on the foot peg. That will absolutely burn your foot off. Uh, but that looks brilliant. So, okay, there's, ah, uh, there's 10 grand... Uh, for that so that and I bet that one sounds amazing as well so we'll save that one in the hundred thousand pound garage and that leaves me with only seven thousand pounds to go for my last bike here hmm and I know exactly what it's going to be. So the Kawasaki's, not any of the new ones, that's for sure. And we're going to go for the largest engine bike possible. Uh, an old one, something that will sound absolutely amazing. Um, so I had one of these as my first bike, which is a Kawasaki 1500 Drifter, VN 1500. So we'll go for uh, oldest. And there, ooh, ooh, uh, hold on. These are all their sports bike. Let's go... Oh, that's what I'm going for. Something absolutely ridiculous in size uh, of both engine, one of the largest engines, over two litres of engine, 
massive exhaust, looks amazing, uh, weighs an absolute ton, uh, brilliant, 12,000 miles for, ah, oh, and bingo, that works into exactly how much I've got left, yes, good, right, so there we go, and that, so that is my cruiser. So there you go, that is my £100,000 motorbike garage, spanning everything from a 250cc uh, Mutt Mushman to a over 2 litre uh, Kawasaki uh, VN2000 from brand new to old to fast to cruiser to super sports to... So the one thing I do probably have too much of is the Aerial Atom being £50,000 and the Honda CB1000R. Uh, probably they are too close in specs. However, the Aerial Atom, again, maybe is more a, a performance piece that you only take out for display days. Meanwhile, the actual uh, Honda is one which you can absolutely thrash every day. Um, so yeah, one one is definitely special sunny days and the Honda you could use absolutely every day. And the Prilia is for track days and the Harley Davidson is for that beautiful sound. The uh, Kawasaki is for, again, that beautiful sound and long distance cruising. And the Mutt Man, uh, or the Mush, Mush Man from Mutt is the one for uh, scooting around a uh, city center. Um, when you want to save some money on fuel all the time and you have to go over potholes <laughs> and you need a nice light bike to get everywhere. So yeah, that is my £100,000 motorbike garage. There you go. Bye-bye.